is our first echo since we were admitted for the NG2. And it is 8.03 in the morning and I have to make it to an appointment about an hour away in Calgary for the echo, for the ECG, for our doctor's appointment with the heart cardiologist. We also have, immediately after, we also have a spirology, I always pronounce that wrong, respiratory appointment to check how he's doing with his lungs. And it has been an actual crazy morning. So he's been up all, pretty much all night. He has horrible constipation and he screams and nothing I can do help. We gave him prune juice. I give him Restorlax as per our pediatrician's recommendation feeding tube and just him eating so much it has been very hard on his body and I don't know what to do this is I guess we're gonna talk to a dietitian today see how he's doing but it's just it's been hard because he just screams and you can tell that his work breathing his heart rate just goes crazy and I and that worries me because I don't want his heart rate to go so fast and cause so many issues because it is hard on them. It's hard on him. It's, it feels like it's 12 hours of screaming pretty much like all night, all morning. And on top of that, <laughs> um, his NG tube came out. So that was great. And it happened like 10 minutes before I had to go. So I had to wake up my husband, who bless his soul, only got two, not even two hours of good sleep last night because he worked last night. He worked till 5 a.m. in the morning. And we needed, I needed him to watch Draven, our oldest, because this day is just too long at the hospital. There is a daycare for siblings of kids that are in the hospital, but they can only take them for an hour and a half. And I probably won't be out of the hospital until 3. So that's just not plausible because my appointment's at 9 a.m. and it's just a really long day. <sighs> and he got switched to nights last minute, so it's just been a gong show. But his NG tube in, he was very unhappy, screaming for that, screaming because he's constipated, screaming because he's in pain, screaming because he's tired. This guy just has the worst, and he's going to go to an echo, which isn't comfortable. I mean, it's not invasive, but it's annoying. You have to stay pretty still to get a good measurement. And yeah, that's, he's going to be hungry because the time frame is going to be hungry. Oh, he puked twice this morning and he's only been up for an hour and a half. I, I don't really know how to catch a grip like on what's going on. I just want to cry. <laughs> it felt like everything that could go wrong went wrong. And this is a pretty important appointment because it's the first one since he was admitted. He hasn't been doing very good. He was sweating last night, which it only happens at night, not when he's feeding. So I don't know if it's heart related or what <sighs> but you know your mom brain just goes on overdrive not much you can do about that it's kind of I have to just kind of tell myself to stop worrying because it is what it is there's only so much we can do I just want to hop on here and let you guys know I'm very frustrated <laughs> and today was not a good morning and this is just reality I did manage to pack a lunch pack everything I, I hope I packed everything that we need made raven breakfast. I didn't get a chance to eat. I did a heatless hairstyle and it is, I didn't get a chance to fix it or curl any pieces to, to make it look all polished or whatever. So it's kind of frizzy mess. It's kind of flat in some places. So we're just gonna roll with it because I just did not have time. So I'll probably update you guys after I talk to the doctor, the heart doctor. Probably also after I talk to the respirologist just because I don't know if I want to a video in the hospital. I'll probably get maybe a, a clip or two of the echo if I'm not too shy, if I have a chance, but we'll see. Poor little dude. I hate these days. They're so long. They're so hard on him. They're hard on our heart to hear how he's doing, but it's also good because it's hard to get a good indicator on how he's doing. There's very little things that you can kind of pick up on, especially when his baseline is so low. You kind of like any little thing, like the puking or the night sweats, you're like, is that something? And then everyone kind of, you know, they don't want to hop the gun. And here in Canada, especially, they're really hush hushed on, I feel. The parents worried or just kind of like, I don't know. I can see that he's not doing well and I can tell
well that everyone around me wants to like keep me in a bubble and I don't want to be in this bubble anymore. I just want to know what's going on so that I don't feel so in the dark because when I'm talking to other moms going through this in the States or in other parts of the world, they get they're in on everything. Like everyone knows so much more than me. Like I'm never I'm not hearing some of the numbers or the measurements or I'm not getting some of the information that other moms I feel like are getting. So today I'm going to ask for an echo report because I've only ever had one and it seems standard practice everywhere else that you get an echo report when you're after the appointment. So I just feel like I don't know anything. I don't know how he's progressing. I know I only really know his set score which has jumped from uh, 4.6 to last I think it was like 10.4, 10.3 which obviously is a really big jump in six months of life um, and that's concerning in and of itself which I didn't really I mean I knew it was bad but I guess it's the rate of growth that's bad and it's progressing quickly like some people are born with little kiddos are born with larger valves in Denver but they kind of level out that's kind of like where they stay very slow Z score rate very slow size However, Denver is just progressing so quickly and literally every appointment it's bad news after bad news and I'm just overhearing bad news. I just want to hear good news for once. I'm over it. Ah. Well, let's be optimistic because maybe today we'll hear something. Whether that be nothing has grown, it hasn't gotten worse. Maybe it's gotten better. Maybe we can kind of know a better time for him on surgery to make his quality of life better if that's what they're kind of going for. I just want to know something. It feels like every month is just the longest, shortest month in the world. I don't even know how to explain it. Every month you're just like, I want to know how he's doing. I almost wish they were bi-weekly, but again, like what's not going to change? It's really not going to change anything because we're still waiting for this one part of his body to get big enough to fit the adult size valve in. I, I don't really, I don't even know what we're doing. Like, I feel like we're, like, I don't even know. I honestly have no idea what they're wanting to do with him and I'm just over being naive. I'm going to figure out today some information and I will relay that to you guys. So, uh, let's hope today gets a little bit better because the morning did not start off great. Stressful. You don't want to 
something else new to report. We're just going, we're going to add a little bit more calories because he's not gaining the weight as they would like to see. He is puking a lot. NG tube feedings can do that. I wasn't surprised. He has a lot of work breathing. Like they say, it's like he's running a marathon every day. So the calories we do get in, he's just burning them up like no other. We did have a respiratory appointment, which ended up going quite well. Nothing new to report, no change in oxygen. We still are going to need, yeah, oxygen. We're still in the same amount of oxygen, 0.5 of a liter. We're not going to be doing a sleep test. I guess they were unaware because the surgery that we do is out of Edmonton. I guess they were unaware that we're going to be having a pectus and diaphragm surgery in the next, I don't know, it's kind of like six to eight months changing every month. So the next six to eight months, we're going to be having the open heart surgery on his aortic valve, plus the pectus surgery, plus the diaphragm surgery. So they don't want to do a sleep test until we, until he's like recovered. So they can kind of get a, an accurate depiction on how he's doing when he's sleeping. But really, this is a, this is kind of a very routine day. It is 2.30, so I've been gone all day. My husband, I bless his soul, has to work again tonight after barely sleeping so I'm going to try to rush home and have him take a nap before he has to go to work and be there at six. Oh, he's such a good dad. <laughs> I don't know what else I would do without him. It would be so much harder. Denver's beaten up back there. He's sleeping. I think he needs the rest. Poor little guy. He's had a big day. Every time he would try to fall asleep, someone would come in and want to have a look at him. But, yeah, this is a, my very first hospital video.